Elizabeth Craft. Yes, uh, we are the hosts of the Happier with Gretchen Movement podcast, and we're sisters. Um, and we are here to talk about how to have more fun. Uh, summertime is often associated with fun here in the United States. Summer is our kind of, you know, school's out season. Um, but of course, we want to have fun all year round. Um, yes. So we're going to talk about some things that we remind ourselves um, in order to be happier. Now, listen, I was thinking about you because you have this super fun plan that's on your 22 for 22 list, but it hasn't happened yet. And that is doing your walk from Encino to Malibu. Right? Yes, yes. Um, um, now that's a certain kind of fun, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that's like the kind of fun where you're living in an atmosphere of growth. Um, right. and it would actually be fun, but it would also be hard. Yes. Um, which is okay. Um, but yes, we haven't done it yet. I will say my friend Allison has plotted the route. She has, uh, biked it. Yeah. Um, and I think it, I'm really the holdup, um, because mm. I feel like my stamina isn't necessarily where it needs to be. Uh, mm. But yes, we need to, I need to make that fun a priority, Gretch. Okay. So I have a suggestion for you, okay. which is um, put it on the calendar um, because uh, things that can be done at any yes. time are often done at no time. And especially I know, cause you're a TV writer, like unusually you kind of have the summer off, yes. but it's all going to pick up again in the fall. And it's, and how many times for all of us, it's like you have these big plans for the summer and it just, it just flies by. Uh, and so I think having it on the calendar, even if you know you might have to reschedule it, at least then it's like. Yeah, it's a real it's, thing. It's not theoretical anymore. It's going yeah. going from the in the atmosphere to something concrete. Yes. Um, now we got some other. So that's my advice to you and yeah, to I, everybody I in it. general and to me, which is if something's important, put it on the calendar and then it's at least like got a, like a bookmark. Um, but so here we have some other questions for listeners. So Elizabeth, let's talk about this. Okay. Someone says, I love to read, but rarely get quiet time with young kids. Any tips for making quiet time, a fun game they can play too. Mm. So, yeah. So, um, what are some ideas? It's you like use? the what? old one, two, three hush puppies game. Remember that? Oh, I love hush puppies. Explain hush puppies to people who don't know how to play hush puppies. This <laughs> yes. is a key game I, for parents. Yes. I feel like you used this on me when I was little. It's like, Probably. You, I, in my memory, um, it's you say one, two, three hush puppies and you see who can go the longest without speaking. Right. Um, so if you talk, you lose. Yes. If you stay quiet, you win. Yes. 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 Um, and that's a good one. Yeah. Some kids who are really competitive, like they will stay quiet for a long time. That's a good one. I mean, another thing we did in our family is we just had quiet time um, after lunch and you could play quietly, but you, uh, you were expected to do something, you know, like in your room or, or, you know, something quiet. And that worked really well in our family. Um, and we I still also kind of observe it. I also think like if you frame it, you can do the old, okay, you have a choice. You can take a nap or yeah. <laughs> you could be quiet in your room. Yeah. Well, then being quiet in your room right. feels like a victory. Yes. So uh, if they're really young, that might be a good tool to use. Right. And also kind of like reading time, if you can say so, like uh, this is like I'm going to read and you're going to read a really good, you know, that it's great to uh, model whatever behavior. So if they see that you're reading and it's time for them to, whether they're looking at picture books, um, or reading. And one thing about our family, um, we went to the library a lot and it was always like a really big deal to go to the library and we rarely bought books. So if we bought books, it was like a super big deal. It'd be like, mm. Oh, before we go to our grandparents' house in North Platte or something, we get to go and like buy books. I remember like getting my Wizard of Oz books for the, for the long car ride. Um, and so if you make it into kind of feeling like it's kind of special, like, Ooh, you can look at your library books or, um, that can be, that can make it good. Um, okay. Here's another one. Okay. This is good. Let's you're an obliger. How can obligers make sure they're making time for what they want to do mm. when fun is usually with a group of friends or family? Well, I mean, I think it's the old, um, tell yourself that you like you having fun and being happy and taking care of your needs, um, will help you, um, take care of others better. Right. Yeah. It's like, 
if you're having fun in your life, it'll be more likely that you'll be fun for others. Yes. Um, and then it's what you say. It's like the old put it on the calendar. I think one of the hard things about the put it on the calendar is it feels counterintuitive. Like, well, if it's fun, it's not something I should need to like schedule like a dentist appointment. Yes. And it's that mental kind of block of like, because if it's just for you, right. say it's, you know, for you, fun is going and sitting in the park and reading for half an hour it does, it feels like you shouldn't have to put that on a calendar. Well, I see that we have a question, like how can a questioner practice spontaneity? And then, and sometimes like upholders want spontaneity or, or obligers. Rebels usually love spontaneity. They don't have, they have trouble not yeah. being spontaneous. First of all, I would say, I do not care about spontaneity. I'm an upholder. I don't value spontaneity at all. <laughs> I don't value it. So I don't, I, you know, so you don't have to, like just because people talk about the value of spontaneity, you don't have to, embrace spontaneity mm -hmm. if it doesn't work for you or you can do something which is like sort of spontaneity adjacent which is you schedule time to goof off so you say something on saturday afternoon from from two to five i'm going to do whatever i feel like doing so in a way it's spontaneous which is good for if you want some spontaneity but you also know when it's going to happen so you feel like it's filling in it feel filling into your larger plan um I think, you know, and like if you're, Liz, uh, Ellen and I just went on a trip together and I did try to make sure that I didn't get so locked into a schedule that like, like we were mm. eating at a restaurant and we realized that this, that this museum that we wanted to go to stayed open till midnight. And we didn't realize when we went to this restaurant that it just happened to be right next to this museum. We just didn't know the geography. And Eleanor realized it. I was like, we could go to the museum, not tomorrow, but after dinner. Oh. And it turned out to be super amorous like we were uh -huh. all dressed up and we went you know at 10 30 to this museum it's really cool how fun so, so that was very spontaneous yes. i was like patting myself in the back it was that, sort of like spontaneous but in 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 a range because because yes. you had yeah. been planning to go there <laughs> yeah um oh but here's another thing i would say about obligers okay so i've heard i think this is a really good idea for obligers like if you're in a situation where it's like we're all going to disneyland or like we're going on a, we're going to paris or we're going on a tr or we're going home to kansas city and there's so many things that we want to do and obligers get into this thing about um how do they how do they meet their own expectations or maybe you're with an obliger and you want them to be taken into account like how can you do that I think this is a somebody an obliger told me this. I thought it was so very clever. So, like, let's say, let's say you and I are, and mom and dad we're all in Kansas City. We're having a big like we're all there together, and we want to make sure that we all do some of the things that we most want to do. So each of us would write down like our three or our five top things, mm. and then we would look at every uh, privately. Then we would look at them and we would say, okay, well, what are the things that most people want to do or everybody wants to do? So that goes on the list. We all want to go to Winstead's. Okay. You, me and mom want to go to halls. Like that goes, yeah. so you can do it. But then you can say, well, everybody has to have at least one thing that they really want to do. No one can have everybody's mm, expectations right. met, but none of their own. So you can look at this to make sure that like everyone's being taken account of but nobody feels like they're imposing themselves on the group because they're just saying what they want and everybody else is also saying what they want. And so I thought that was just kind of a neat systematic way of making sure that everyone's preferences are taken into account or like, where are you going to eat? Yes. Um, maybe one person really is like, can't wait to go to this restaurant that nobody else really cares about. Well, you're like, right. well, everybody should get to do like one, like high, high intensity thing that they love. Yes. I love that. Um, yeah. because also then it can make everybody's attitude better when they're doing the sort of other things that maybe aren't first on their list, knowing yes. that they're getting, you know, it makes yeah. all the activities more enjoyable for everybody. Well, and that's how you get obliger rebellion is when people are like, well, no one's listening to me. Right. I'm meeting everybody else's expectations, but you know, and it all just gets to be too much. Whereas if you're like, okay, well, we're trying to uh, take it into account. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think I thought that was a really good yes. way of making sure that obligers um, that obligers are, uh, are are taken account of. Um, and we should say that if that uh, if you want to if you want to take the quiz for your tendency or get other people to take a quiz, um, go to quit go to uh, GretchenRubin.com slash four tendencies. Um, now, F O U R tendencies. And now, Gretchen, this is slightly different. Anne has a question as an upholder that I think is fascinating because I actually think it could apply to others as well, which is 
<clears throat> okay, so you put something fun on the calendar. How do you keep it from starting to feel like a task? Because I do think things on the calendar, you know, it can just feel like, oh, some, you know, oh, this dinner party, oh, this, you know, trip to the beach, like so many things I have to do. How do you like keep that feeling at bay? Yeah, because because then everything sort of feels like work or it feels like it's, um, it's, it's it, I, maybe part of it. I think I just, I feel like that's sort of inherent in the upholder way, uh -huh. which is just sort of like- Everything feels like a task. And, you know, it just, we kind of lock in in that way. And that's, and that is where like when others will say that upholders have this, this aspect of kind of rigidity or inflexibility and, and what can seem to them to be kind of like almost a joylessness because we're just like really going through our paces. <laughs> Um, so part of it, I think, is make sure that those things truly are fun for you. Because mm, I think yes. the holders and everybody does this thing where they're like, oh, I love doing yoga. Yeah. And I mean, some people honestly love doing yoga. But a friend of mine told me that. And I was like, look, hey, I've known you for a long time. <laughs> you might think it's valuable to do yoga. You might be glad you did yoga. But is yoga fun for you the way I think of something being fun? No. Uh, uh, Julie don't, is don't, saying maybe have the actual thing separate from the days you prepare for it. So it'd be sort uh, of like if you're going to the beach, pack your beach bag on Thursday yeah. and then it's just going. So you don't have the things surrounding it. I was even thinking, Greg, That's what if deal. you wrote it on your calendar, like all caps with like emojis around it? Right. See what I'm saying? So it's like, go to the beach. Fun. Yes. You know, you're kind yes. of signaling your brain. This is not the yes. same as going to the yes. dentist. This is its own thing. Yes. You know, then it, it could just be kind of like one of those, you know, right. just signals. Reframing it. Yeah. Well, I like the, I, I like the idea of separating like, because it's true. A lot of things that are fun have a lot of grunt work attached to them. Like maybe it would be really fun for you to like try a new recipe, but that means like you have to go to two different grocery stores right. and you have to like, you know, dig out that special pan that's on the high shelf of the closet. And so there is like the kind of unpleasant stuff. So that's a good point. Like maybe have it so that when you're having the fun part, it's pure fun. And you're not, it's not weighed down with a lot of uh, like all the grunt work that's attached to it. Um, oh, here, Julia says, yes, I have stickers around the, uh, because of kids and I use them on my planner mm. all the time. That's a great idea. So maybe that it's true. I mean, maybe you do just, you highlight it or sort of set it apart. So it feels like, oh, this is a treat. Yes. Um, yes. Well, we love a treat. I mean, oh, Elizabeth, yeah. how many times on the podcast have we talked about treats? Yes. Different good treats. Different good um, treats. And, you know, and another thing, Gretchen, and this kind of goes back to what you were saying about the yoga, it, it, it's worth spending time to like, think about what is truly fun for you. Yes, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, 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 like, yes. To me, like, it is so truly fun when I get to like, hang out with other moms and talk or hang out with other friends, my TV writer friends and talk. Yeah. And like, that is truly what I love to do. And so it's like, again, rather like, I want to hike to Malibu and that would be fun. And I would be so glad I did it, but it's not the same as just like hanging out in my backyard around the fire pit. That's like a fun that is, you know, more of a release um, kind of fun. Well, there's all different kinds of fun. Like fun, some fun is like easy fun and it's fun because it's easy and like scratches that itch. And then some kind, sometimes it's an adventure and maybe it's a little bit, anxiety producing and maybe there's some like uncertainty maybe you're even kind of dreading it and then it ends up being fun when you're doing it and almost most when you're looking back on it and i agree like you want to have challenging fun sometimes that's atmosphere of growth and it can be really cool um but then sometimes you just want to do like what comes naturally i mean Alyssa, yeah. i know you like you love to sit by the pool and read a book yes you know yes. like that's not challenging right except to get yourself to do it exactly um, but like to you, that is so much fun. Um, yes. But walking to Malibu would would be more memorable. Yeah. Oh, it would be. A, yes. So it would be. It would give me more ultimately. But it is. You know. It. But it's a different kind of fun. I mean, another thing, Gretch, that I have found is convenience. Okay. So here's an yes. example. You know, I love an escape room. I yes. think they're so fun. Even if we don't get out, I just 
there's something about it. Well, I don't think I've ever got, my, I've only gotten out like one time. Yeah. <laughs> it just gets the adrenaline going. It's, I'm not even particularly good at it. I just really yeah. enjoy it. And I've been wanting to go to an escape room, but I just kept thinking, oh, well, they're all in Hollywood and that's 45 minutes away. And who knows what the parking is. And then I thought, well, let me just Google and see if there's any escape rooms near me. Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm in a huge city. Yes, there's like three different escape rooms in the valley where, that are very easy to get to and have a ton of parking. And so then we went to one and did one with a friend of Jack's. So it's like, oh, just realizing maybe this isn't as hard to execute as yeah. I think it is. I mean, just Google it. It's like one yeah. of those things you're Try. like, I'm always like, if only, if only it were possible to find out the answer to my question, like right. even like the weirdest question you have, often if you just type it in, the answer pops up right away. So I don't know yeah. why it's sort of like, how can I possibly ascertain this? <laughs> or you just assume that's the thing. You don't even know you're making an assumption. That's when it's really hard. But um, I think that that's, uh, the, oh, well, let's talk about escape rooms for a minute because Emmy says she's never done them. Eliza, my daughter Eliza turned on our family. That was like a, yes. we were all home for the Christmas holidays. And again, I think you you and I were kind of dreading it. We yeah. were we were just doing it for like to be good sports. Yeah. To the whole say. everyone gets to do something they want to do. And Eliza, and Eliza really wanted to wanted do it. one. It yeah. was the first time she'd she'd heard about them and she'd never done them. Um, but describe yeah. what it is for people who haven't. Oh, done for it. people who don't know, yes. Yeah, so an escape room is there's different themes and they're usually rated on you know difficulty level. And I do recommend not getting going to the most difficult uh at first. Um, no. and you go into the room and there's all sorts of clues. And the idea is you are trying to get out in an hour, you have one hour. And um, they'll give you, if you get stuck, you can say, we need a clue. And like, somebody's watching your game, the game master. And so they'll, yeah. um, you know, chime in with, okay, you know, they'll give you a clue and then you get further. Um, but even so it is not easy, but there's, there's little mazes and there's things that yeah. drop and there's hidden doors and, you know, a room opens up and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's very exciting. And it's a really good thing to do with like multi-generation yes. because everybody can contribute in their yes. own way. And it's really yes. good. Okay. One last question. Alice says, as a rebel, it appeals to me to just list things you want to do and not put them on the calendar. At least you'll have an idea mm. of what you find fun and then pick one when you feel like it. I, this is absolutely fantastic advice for rebels. Never try I mean, there must be a could do list. This is, so if you go to the tackle box, GretchenRubin.com slash shop and go to the tackle box, you'll see that one of the pads in there is could do things you could do because exactly for this rebel, sometimes it's helpful for them to remind themselves of all the things that they might want to do or that they could do. And then they do what they feel like when they feel like it. And, um, and that is really important um, for them. Oh, and Alice says, Oh, for like using the 22 for 22 list. Right. Because it's sort of like, you're you're articulating what you want from yourself and that's helpful to kind of spell it out for yourself but then you have this freedom of like well do i want to do it or not when do i want to do it um oh this is interesting julie is saying i would love to just see a list of things to try because i love trying new things it's funny because some people love trying new things and other people spend their whole lives attempting not to try anything new so it's just kind funny of how you know people fall on one side or the other of that you know, I'm kind of like that myself. And I think that's why I keep writing the kind of books that I write. Cause then uh -huh. I'm like, well, I have to go to try cryotherapy right, and right. go have a sound bath and go to flavor university yeah. because, um, you know, I'm writing we'll a book. By the um, um, but I do think it's really helpful to get ideas for other people. Elizabeth, I mean, we get so many ideas from listeners. Yes, um, here's an idea. Time, oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just say, here's an idea I actually just had this morning because I was thinking, oh, I'd love to like arrange an outing for friends. And I thought about uh, escape rooms and I know some people don't like those. And then I thought, well, I keep hearing this is a, if you're in a big city about places you can go and just break things. There's like rooms and they're full of dishes what? and you have hammers and you have furniture and it's just getting out all of your aggression and you break things. That's the whole thing. You have like an hour or half an hour or whatever. And you just break things the whole time. And I thought, I bet I could get some people on board to just wow. go and break things and then have dinner. Wouldn't wow. that be fun? Okay. 
Oh my gosh, that is, I've never heard of that. I must know Google more. Google it. I'm sure Google they it. have it in New York. They have it. Um, it's, it's, it's a new thing. And I, it's, I think it's getting very popular. That and okay. ax throwing also very popular. Yes. I've been hearing about the ax throwing, <laughs> which apparently is harder than it sounds. I'm like, yeah. it sounds incredibly hard. So yeah, I guess it's hard. Um, well, anyway, this is super fun. It's fun just to talk about having fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel inspired fun. to like go out and do fun things now, which I guess that's the whole point. That's exactly right. So thanks so much um, for this conversation and 